to give fluids or not to give fluids? That is the question. When you have a hypotensive patient, the question that you have to ask, is this patient in front of me gonna respond to fluids or is this fluid just gonna build up in the extravascular space? This is one of those clinical questions that we still have not been able to accurately assess despite all the technology we have available. If you've ever watched my videos, you'll know that I'm very opposed to just giving fluids and seeing what'll happen. You need a way to know whether or not your patient's gonna respond to fluid. There's one test that has been shown to have the most reliability of all the tests we have available to us. It's called the passive leg raise. The passive leg raise has a patient sitting with their head in bed elevated 45 degrees and we assess what their stroke volume is. So you need an ultrasound, a swan gans catheter, or another non-invasive monitor. And then you lay the head of the bed down and put their legs up 45 degrees, wait about a minute and a half. Blood that's in the capacitance veins of the large extremity in the pelvis now get into the central circulation. Between 200 and 400 cc's of the patient's endogenous blood gets back into the central circulation, and you need to assess the stroke volume again. If the stroke volume improves by 10 to 15%, this person's likely volume responsive, go ahead and give them crystalloids. The biggest pitfall I see when people are doing a passive leg raise is they put the legs up there and they look at the blood pressure. Blood pressure is not a measurement of your stroke volume. It may be a reflection of your stroke volume, but it is not in itself a reflection of the stroke volume. If you're going to use the passive leg raise, you need a way to assess whether or not there's a change in stroke volume, not blood pressure. So whenever you imagine a patient who's hypotensive, always ask the question, 